I'm Simon Piff, the Vice President of Trust and Security Research at IDC Asia Pacific. And I'm here to welcome you to a three-part cybersecurity podcast where we're going to cover the topics of the top cyber challenges of today, the impact of these cybersecurity challenges upon security leadership, and digital transformation, and the importance of trust. Joining me in this series, I am delighted to welcome Mr. Takashi Amano, who is the General Manager, Cybersecurity Center, Toshiba Corporation, and Technology Executive and CISO, Toshiba Digital Solutions Corporation, where he currently leads research and development for artificial intelligence and cybersecurity technology for cyber physical systems. After leading development for hardware, software, and cloud service for consumer devices, such as mobile, PC, tablet, and TV. Welcome, Amano-san. I'm also pleased to welcome Kumar Ritesh, the founder and CEO of Cypherma. Ritesh joined a national intelligence agency earlier in his career and rose to lead the cyber intelligence and counterterrorism department before his foray into the commercial sector. During his time with the agency, he had the opportunity to lead cybersecurity strategies at geopolitical levels and contributed to national efforts to keep cyberspace safe for all. Today, Ritesh is the founder and CEO of Cypherma, a cyber intelligence company with operations in Singapore, Japan, India, and the US. Ritesh founded Cypherma in 2017 after a stint with a global mining company as a global head of cybersecurity. In this podcast, we're going to look into some of the top cyber challenges of today. Amano san, hello. The region faces many cybersecurity challenges. Could you please share with us the top three challenges you think are the most urgent and important and explain why these issues are a cause for concern? First is fighting against new and diversified cyber attacks. On top of state-sponsored cyber attacks, we have been struggling for the last few years. Recent targeted ransomware attacks with sophisticated techniques are more difficult to detect and block, putting our business continuity at risk. Second is supply chain risk, such as the solar winds incident last year. As adoption of digitization is accelerating, risk of supply chain attack is increasing more than ever, especially in manufacturing industry like us, controlling suppliers, securing high-level quality for procurement supplies, and ensuring security for Toshiba products are all high-priority issues. Then lastly, lack of experienced security experts. As cyber criminals evolve their techniques, it is harder to find security experts and capable of defending our organization. Great. Thanks, Amana san so, so ransomware, supply chain, and resourcing, serious challenges. Ritesh, what's the viewpoint from uh, uh, your perspective? We've heard from an end user, but I'd love to hear what you and the team at Cypherma are seeing. No, first of all, thanks for having me here, Simon. Um, and uh, uh, thanks for talking to us, Amana san Well, I agree with Amana san actually, on the three issues he has highlighted. Um, you know, fighting against more evolved cyber criminals. You have new attack types. You have supply chain attacks and your lack of experience. Um, I think I will add three points here. Uh, first of all, let's just start with Asia as a reason. Um, I think we are very uniquely placed. Uh, we have different languages. We have different cultures here. You have, you have young population here. Everybody is going mobile. You have digital adoption right at the top. And I clearly see there are three compelling challenges, uh, which is really driving, you know, focus of uh, cybersecurity as well as cyber criminals, quite honestly. Um, look at like those three factors. You've got cybercrime and threat evolution. You've got environmental ecosystem and you've got readiness and awareness. Uh, let me touch upon on those three. Um, you've got cybercrime and threat evolution, right? Let's just start with the involvement of uh, you know, state-sponsored groups um, and more nations jumping into, you know, uh, cybercrime. 
uh, has really elevated, you know, uh, the complete ecosystem of how cybercrime used to be looked upon uh, before. Uh, you have now, you know, cyber criminals with uh, indefinite infrastructure, resources. Uh, they have all the anonymity given by state by which they are able to kind of hide their act very, very effectively, which is clearly creating, you know, a big gap between a defender and an attacker. Uh, now, attackers are slightly becoming more powerful because of that. You have new ways of, you know, uh, making phenomenal money, as Amano San was explaining, ransomwares. My God, the way this has evolved uh, is, is quite, quite frankly, you know, I, I remember still those days, a couple of years back, when only 3% of ransomware impacted uh, targets used to actually potentially pay the ransom, whereas today, almost 34% of organizations are effectively paying ransoms. Um, in fact, ransomware industry uh, on its own has become the most lucrative industry, quite honestly, you know, 21,000% ROI. I think no other industry has performed that way, Simon, quite honestly. Uh, you have deep fakes, um, which is, you know, now being looked upon very seriously by cyber criminals. Uh, to cause social unrest, which is a perfect actually recipe in everything else which we have been facing. You have multimorphic malwares, which actually change themselves based on the environment. Uh, those are being innovated by cyber criminals. And you have a humongous interest in cyber criminal community towards behavioral data now, uh, which is also driving a big influx into how they, they are actually looking at their target. It, it is not those days where, you know, potentially an organization or a SME uh, used to be a target. Now individuals are becoming their target as well. Let's go into environmental ecosystem. You know, look at Asia. Now we have wave of startups. We have new companies uh, who have got heaps of PII, FII, CII data. And of course, we know um, that not all these companies have got the best possible cyber posture. These are young companies. Um, you know, uh, and these young companies do not have that sort of nuances of having a complete comprehensive cyber posture management, which is surely attracting cyber criminals um, towards them. And, and given the, the quantum of data access they have, um, surely, you know, that is driving a lot of focus of cyber criminals towards these young companies in this part of the world. And the last bit, which is around readiness and awareness, right? Um, I clearly continue to see, you know, uh, despite of everything which we have seen in the last few years, I continue to see we do not actually emphasize ourselves to understand the external environment. Um, there is no emphasis is still uh, given by organization to really understand what they are up against. I think we keep going buying tools, capability, punching them in into our environment, without really understanding, are we against a strong wind or are we against a tsunami? And if we are preparing for a tsunami, we need to prepare very differently. Uh, number two, lack of awareness. You know, um, there are gaps there in, in the way individual people understand cybersecurity organizations, as well as, you know, some government agencies in this part of the world. You have a clear gap in the policies. You have got a clear sort of wisdom which is driven here that cyber is a still IT problem, quite honestly. And, and with all this, uh, surely, you know, we have got some work to do in this part of the world. Um, and, and surely we need to prepare against, you know, more than ever ready cyber criminals, uh, because honestly, that world has completely evolved to next level, whereas we are still in that chase game. I mean, you're, you're saying the cyber criminals now are, apart from making huge amounts of money, are getting quite specific with their targeting to organizations and individuals. Should we be thinking of that in terms of the, the training as well to be targeted? I mean, I mean, it's a very scary thought. Yeah. See, the way to look at this is like, you know, um, I think training, um, you know, um, I would say consumers, audience, people is one part of it. But how do you go about creating that ecosystem where different nations can actually operate cohesively together? I think that's another factor which is not very clear right now, right? And the third factor is the policy itself. Uh, think about it. 
you know, the, you know, incident declaration policies are not very clear still. And that needs to come as a, as a, as a centralized sort of policy, which is driven by a centralized body who can drive those, those clarity. And I don't think so we are there yet, Simon. No, no. Thank you very much, Ritesh. So there we have it. We heard the concerns from industry around ransomware and supply chain and uh, obviously resourcing. Uh, and then from uh, Ritesh around the, the, the industrialization of cybercrime and, and the returns that are available. So in future episodes, we're going to be talking about the impact of these on cybersecurity leaderships. So we uh, hope to see you in the next episode.